Unit 1, Sushi 1, A, B, C, and D. English Settlement in the New World the settlement of permanent English colonies in North America, beginning with Jamestown in 1607, further cemented the development of an already emerging and complex Atlantic world. The convergence of North American, South American, European, and African peoples in the Western Hemisphere was, comp was a complicated mix of conquest, trade, and religious missions. Spanish, French, and English colonies simultaneously uh, existed in North America, each with different objectives, different approaches uh, to the American Indians that they encountered. The gang's all here. Spanish, French, and English. Mercantilism. Although many English colonists came to North America searching for religious or political opportunities, it was economic opportunity that fueled the ambition of other English colonists, as well as their mother country. Investors sought financial returns for their individual colonies. Uh, England sought to extract resources from North America in order to compete with their European rivals, the Spanish and the French. By the 1650s, England was heavily entrenched in transatlantic trade based on mercantilism. Mercantilism is an economic theory based on reducing a country's imports while expanding its exports to, in order to maximize the wealth of the mother country. In the highly competitive European world of the 16th and 17th centuries, wealth equals power. And when we're talking about mercantilism, we're talking about the mother country, Great Britain, who hearts mercantilism. America, what a resource. Mercantilism inspired European governments, including England, to promote American colonies as a source of raw materials not readily available in the mother country. Some of the most important resources England plucked from its colonies included lumber, sugar, wool, tobacco, indigo, and rice. These raw materials were used in England to produce manufactured goods for export to other European countries and to back the colonists of North America. Favorable trade for Mama. A favorable trade balance resulted for England in the colonial arrangement. Raw materials that were scarce in England were acquired from their colonial possessions. Simultaneously, the colonies were a ready market for the manufactured products produced in England from the raw materials. The transatlantic trade network that resulted led to various colonial labor arrangements and restrictive policies to ensure England maximized its mercantilist potential. The Navigation Acts. These laws were designed to keep England's own colonies from competing with their mother country by mandating three fundamental criteria for transatlantic trade. Number one, all goods shipped to or from English North America had to travel on English ships. Two, any goods being imported to the colonies from Europe had to first be processed through an English port. And three, most colonial resources could only be exported to England. English, English, England. Transatlantic trade flourished under the mercantilist system. English ships loaded with rum, cloth, and other manufactured goods sailed to Africa, where they were traded for Africans as part of the slave trade. Then, the Middle Passage. The slaves were transported on a brutal voyage to the Americas and sold there as forced labor commodity to the colonial landlords. And third, the journey of transporting American raw materials to England to be made into manufactured goods, and the cycle would then continue. The Southern Colonies The geography of the southern colonies is extremely important because of the region's rich soil and long growing seasons. It's going to develop a very strong agricultural colony. Indian relations. As more and more colonists began moving in, they continue to encroach, the relationship between the colonists and the Indians are going to become more and more violent. It once started as more peaceful, but as more and more colonists continue to come uh, to the New World, it's going to be a more violent relationship. Virginia. The first permanent English colony in North America was founded in Jamestown, 1607. 
Jamestown, Virginia. The establishment of Jamestown was a business venture of London's Virginia Company. It's a joint stock company, which raised capital for the expedition to America by selling shares of a company to investors. Once financed by investors, the Virginia Company planned to send colonists to find gold and other valuable natural resources in America. The spoils, the, the money, the, the wins, would be sent back to England to pay off investors and make a handsome profit. The Virginia Company was granted a royal charter by King James I in 1606. Virginia is the king of the colonies. Jamestown struggling. Initially, the colonies suffered mightily. Disease, famine, and Indian tax all hindered or prevented the Jamestown settlement from fulfilling the Virginia Company's vision for the colony. The colony was planted along the James River, which bred deadly diseases such as malaria and dysentery. A lack of leadership also called the, caused the colonists to be unprepared to sustain themselves for the first winter. Food and shelter had not been a priority for the wealth-seeking early colonists to Jamestown. It was known as the Starving Time. Cue the leadership, Captain John Smith. His famous orders, he that will not work will not eat. He is going to encourage more farming and construction of better fortification. Smith was not popular with his people, but his leadership is ultimately going to be what saves the colony. Tobacco is huge in the Jamestown colony. Tobacco to production was another development that helped to save the Jamestown colony and make it more lucrative or able to make money. John Rolfe, who later married the American Indian Princess Pocahontas, arrived in Jamestown in 1610 from the Caribbean. He experimented with tobacco seeds to produce a crop that became very desirable in Europe. Having survived the starving time of Jamestown's early years and secured the financial importance of the colony with tobacco production, Virginia emerged as a critical component of England's mercantilist system. In other words, Virginia was making England a lot of money. Maryland. In 1632, King Charles I granted Lord Baltimore proprietary rights to land in the Chesapeake Bay region to plant a colony. The land was a reward for the noble for the for the noble's service to the king. The resulting colony of Maryland was settled initially as a haven for Catholics who were being persecuted by Protestants. Because the Chesapeake Bay region was fertile ground for tobacco production, similar to the land in neighboring Virginia, Maryland's Catholics were quickly outnumbered in their own colony. In an effort to preserve the rights of Catholics in Maryland, the Lord Baltimore quickly had the Act, the act of Toleration it's going to be passed by the Maryland Legislative Assembly. This colonial law guaranteed religious freedom in Maryland to all Christians, Protestants, and Catholics. The Carolinas, North and South the Carolina colony was originally a single proprietary colony located between Virginia and Spanish Florida. The land was given in 1663 to eight nobles who helped Charles II reclaim the monarchy from Oliver Cromwell in what is known as the Restoration. The eight nobles were given Carolina and referred to the, the Lord Proprietors of the vast colony. Georgia was the last English colony to be established in North America prior to the Revolutionary War. In 1732, Georgia was created by England for two purposes, to act as a defensive buffer and to send a large number of debtors that were crowding London jails. General James Oglethorpe and the 20 trustees who were given the charter for Georgia regulated the, the, col the, the colony and its inhabitants with very, very strict rules. No alcohol and no slaves. The New England colonies. The Mayflower Compact. Before disembarking the Mayflower, the boat, the Pilgrims created and signed the Mayflower Compact. The document is important in the study of the early colonial period in that it was the pledge by the colonists to govern themselves through majority rule. This is really important. You need to know it. The Massachusetts Bay Colony. A group of about 1,000 non-separatist Puritans were led by John Winthrop on their voyage to North America. They established the Massachusetts Bay Colony near present-day Boston. 
while crossing the Atlantic, Winthrop set the tone for the Puritan colonists in his famous model of a Christian charity speech, which is often referred to as a City Upon a Hill speech. City Upon a Hill is where Winthrop challenges the Puritans to work as hard as they possibly could to make a new colony and thrive, since the world would be watching to see if they would be successful. Basically, their hard work would prove their devotion to God and be assembled to the world. Any person who was not completely committed to the overall success of the colony would not be allowed to remain. Rhode Island. Roger Williams was a Puritan minister who faced banishment when his teachings emphasized the limitations of the church to control an individual's conscience. Once forced out of the colony, Williams left Boston with a few supporters and settled a new colony to the south of of the bay. Providence in the new Rhode Island colony was founded by Williams in 1636. Roger hit the road and started Rhode Island. True religious toleration was practiced in the colonies. Colonists were allowed to practice any religion in Rhode Island. Connecticut, another group of Puritans that left the, the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Thomas Hooker was a Puritan minister uh, once again, his teachings differ than that of the church. Him and his follower, followers are going to leave, and they're going to create their own colony. They will also draft America's first written constitution, the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut, in 1639. The document is going to establish a representative government led by a popularly elected legislator and a governor chosen by that legislature. New Hampshire, originally, proportion, originally a portion of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, the small settlement in North eventually formed their own New Hampshire colony in 1679, somewhat more religiously diverse than the strict Puritans. The Middle Colonies New York and New Amsterdam. King Charles II gave the recently acquired New Netherlands colony to his brother James, the Duke of York, as a proprietary colony in 1664. The colony and port were renamed New York in honor of the new proprietor. The original settlers from the previous Dutch colony were allowed to remain in residence, speak their own languages, and worship as they please. Thus, the culture and religious diversity of New York was preserved. The colony continued to grow as a leading trade center. New York is still a leading trade center today. New Jersey. James, the Duke of York who received the New York colony from his brother, believed the colony was too large to administer. He gave two friends, Lord John Berkeley and Sir George Cataret, part of the land which the New Jersey colony was created. The land in New Jersey was sold at low prices to attract settlers, but New Jersey is really most known for. Pennsylvania. William Penn was granted land in North America as repayment of debt to the king owed his father, an admiral of the English Navy. William Penn belonged to a religious group known as the Quakers. The Religious Society of Friends was actually what the Quakers were formerly known as, um, but they were persecuted or, you know, attacked in England for their beliefs. Um, they believed that all individuals possess an inner light in which individuals are capable of, of their own religious interpretations without need for formal clergy. Women were also afforded full participation in faith. Quakers are often referred to as the colonial hippies. They believe in religious toleration and fair treatment of the American Indians. Um, Philadelphia is going to rapidly grow because of the vibrant port city that engages in transatlantic trade goods. Because of the religious and cultural tolerance practiced by Penn and his Quakers, Pennsylvania exemplified the diversity for, the, for which the mid-Atlantic colonies are known.